Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for that special music, Lynn and Linda. That was uh, so beautiful. It took me back to a simpler time. Just very sweet worship. Um, I'll read a little bit more yet from Ezekiel here. Um, and beginning in 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Are we watchmen on the wall? Yeah. Is it our job to... to live out this Christian life that Jesus Christ has given to us? Will you stand fearlessly in defense of the truth? Or will you dabble in the wine of Babel? Who caused the world to drink the wine of their false doctrine? Are we called out people? Are we a different church? Do we have a message? What is that message? Pardon me? Prepare a people. Prepare a people. Third angel messages, right. Let's turn to, um, you know, I just want to read a little bit more here again. I'm 20 and 21. Again, when the righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doeth not sin, he, sh he shall surely live because he is warned although thou hast delivered thy soul. Rationalism idolizes reason. And it makes this the criterion for religion. Turn your Bibles to Matthew. Matthew 11. Matthew 11. And 34. I see there's no 11. So, I screwed up. How about 10? 10. 10.34. Alright. Where is your allegiance? To 
God first. Should it be first and foremost? Are we not ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. If we are ambassadors, what does the word ambassador mean? It means you're a representative of that government, right? So you're a representative of God's government. So this is not our home here. It also means diplomacy. That's the primary thing of the ambassador. Diplomacy. Let us, let us turn back in uh, Matthew 10, 21. And the brother shall deliver up brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in the city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Where's that taken us? Where, how are we any different than the world is saying? Do we look any different? Do we talk any different? Are we being persecuted? Yes. Why are we not being persecuted? We're not different enough. Ooh. We look too much like the world, don't we? It's not their time. We dress too much like the world. We talk too much like the world. There's no difference. It's no you know, I hate to say that I don't want to say that. Let's turn to Leviticus again. Leviticus chapter 10. And, you, and when y'all get there, just say it. Leviticus chapter 10. Verse 8. And the Lord spake unto, Moses, unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons, when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. What, what does wine represent in the Bible? Blood. Pardon me? The blood. It represents doctrine. Okay. And here, what, what is the Lord telling these, these priests? That they're not to drink wine, right? Because it will do what to their understanding? It will be numb their judgment, right? Alright. 10.1 And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense therein and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out a fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Verse 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. You hear that? God was very upset with Nadab and Abihu, wasn't he? So much so that he caused them to be... Done. 
Okay? And their father, Aaron, was not even allowed to mourn them. Not even allowed to mourn them. What is the difference between this fire and strange fire? Now, this fire that God gave to the altar, okay, he sent down from heaven, right, to consume the sacrifice. God said to never let that fire go out because that was holy fire, right? Holy fire. But, maybe they have to you, have a couple glasses of wine, their judgments blurred a little bit. Damn, fire, fire, right? Is it fire, fire? Hey, come on now. If I make a fire over here and you make a fire over here, what's the difference in a fire? They're fire, right? It's the same chemical properties and the air needs oxygen to burn. It's fire. What makes the difference? God. Where it came from. Ooh. It don't even make a difference where it came from other than the fact that God said that this was holy fire. Okay? There was a tree in the Garden of Eden, right? There was a tree there. And God said to that tree that that tree was the knowledge of good and evil. And that Adam and Eve shouldn't go near it. Shouldn't touch it. Shouldn't eat from it. Right? In the whole Garden of Eden, the devil was allowed one place one place where he could go. And it was that tree. Now, was that tree any different than the trees next to it? Who knows? I don't think so. Probably not. But when God says something, God means it. And when he said that that tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I don't care if it's the same as the apple tree next door or an orange tree next door. If God said that tree is the knowledge of good and evil, and you shouldn't touch it, you shouldn't eat from it, don't even go near it. Right? What makes the difference? God said. Right? Now we have Babylon screaming and hollering about making Sunday laws, don't we? Now a day is a day. Right? It's a 24 hour period. Right? So who cares? Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, whatever. What, what's so important about the Sabbath day? That we sanctify 24 hours. <coughs> because God said that this day is different. So what are we going to start learning? That we need to listen to what God says. Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if he says that platter right there is holy. And that one isn't. They look the same to me. Right? What difference is there in them? If he said it, that's what makes the difference. Brothers and sisters, Babylon and all her little sisters are all in line. You know? The supposed Protestants have reached across the gulf. Do you realize what's happening before us? You know that guy, that fella that just, very charismatic guy that just spoke for the Pope here not too long ago? Oh. Tony Palmer. Palmer? Palmer? Yeah. He was, he was pointing out, he wasn't. I don't believe he's alive anymore, is he? No, he's not alive. Yeah. But he had, what, the whole Pentecostal church? Right in with the Pope. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are coming on to the very end of time. We have got to listen to every word that God says. And even if it doesn't make sense, if God said it, that's where we need to be. That's what we need to think. And I don't care what, you know, listen, God has used fire from heaven three times in the Bible. Okay? I don't believe he's going to use it anymore. Because he said in Revelation that the devil is going to use fire or make people believe that he sends down fire from heaven. Right? And that's going to be his sign that what he's telling you is the truth. But yet it goes against God's word. Are you hearing me here? 
Brothers and sisters, we have got to pay close attention to thus saith the Lord and listen to his word because it doesn't matter what we see or what we think or that it doesn't make sense. If God said it, we have to believe it. And that's that. It's really that simple. Okay. So shall we take God at his word? I hope so. Let's turn to Exodus 22, 26. 22, 26. No, it wasn't Exodus. It's Ezekiel. I'm sorry. Boy, I get them too confused. I'm looking at that verse. What in the world? It's two times. You have to I, two times. I get one more? And it'll run me off, huh? Good. 22, 26. Are we all there? Okay. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I have profaned among them. Turn to Jeremiah. Just a little bit back to the left. Jeremiah 1. Be very careful not to screw up any more scripture text. Just be happy. I think that's up to the tongue. Jeremiah 1 16. We all there? Yeah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other gods and have worshipped the what? Of what? The works of their own hands. So if I choose a day of my choosing, what is that? Is that the work of my own hands? Yes. Does the Sunday become an idol? Yes. Hmm. Micah. You know what Micah is? It's the little mini prophets. A little bit further to the right there. You got it. Micah 5, 13. I just want to give you a few scriptures to, to seal the deal on this. When you get there, just holler. Amen. Amen. Okay. Micah 5, 13. The graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thy one more. Psalm 115.4. I like scripture. I like hearing the pages. Amen. I love this book. Psalm 115.4. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of man's Brothers and sisters, I want to read you something. This, um, this is from Marcus Cicero. This is a man that lived many moons ago, and he spoke to the Roman Senate, um, to the Caesar and to the Senate. A nation can survive its fools. I, listen, I want you to think, as I'm reading this, I want you to think about heaven. And I want to think, in the beginning of this, I want you to just think about the war in heaven and what went on with Lucifer and how he acted in the part that he played as I, as I begin to read. This is a small read. A nation can survive its fools and even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. An enemy at the gates is less formidable. For he is known and he carries his banners openly against the city. But the traitor moves among those within the gates freely. You hear the difference? Out of the gate and in the gate. His sly whispers rustling through all the alleys. 
heard in the very halls of government itself. For the traitor appears no traitor. He speaks in accents familiar to his victims, and he wears their face and their garments, and he appeals to the, to the baseness that lies deep in the hearts of all men. He rots the soul of a nation. He works secretly and unknown in the night to, to undermine the pillars of the city. He infects the body politic so that it can no longer resist. A murderer is less to be feared. The traitor is the carrier of the plague. Any amen? amen. Leviticus 16. Leviticus 16 and beginning in verse 29. And this shall be a statute forever unto you. This in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be of your own country or a stranger that sojourn among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath rest unto you, and you shall afflict your souls by a statue forever. Now, I have a little um, word here before the next verse, and it says, This day a Sabbath of Sabbaths, when atonement shall be made for the sanctuary, the altar, the priests, and the people. And the priest, verse 32, and the priest whom he shall anoint, and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in the Father's steed, shall make the atonement, and shall put on linen clothes, even the holy garments, and shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation, and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you, to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. What is this, what is this talking about? The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement, right? What are we living in right now? We are living in the Day of Atonement, right? Do you see what happened there? What did that priest do? Well, yeah, he cleansed the temple and the people, didn't he? He opened it up so there wasn't sin. You follow me? The sin had been forgiven. What has Jesus done? This is a done deal, brothers and sisters. Do you realize that that Friday was the Sabbath of Sabbath? That was, that was the, the, the day of atonement that Christ died. Do you realize, brothers and sisters, that the temple curtain leading into the most holy was what? Rent. Right? What did Jesus do? He opened the door, didn't he? It's wide open. What, what does the Bible say? We go boldly before the throne of God. Why do we go boldly? Because Jesus is our high priest. Jesus has taken care of this. Jesus, priest, king, prophet, sacrifice. Do you see? He's our everything. Jesus has done it all, brothers and sisters. I hope I get an amen. Amen. Listen, I want to tell you. I, I, I want to encourage you. You see this little book? Brothers and sisters, we got cases in this book. We want them to get them out. I was so blessed this week to give this to somebody that really appreciated it. I was also able to give out a Steps to Christ this week. And I was also able to give out a great controversy this week. What are you guys doing? We got cases of these sitting around. We shouldn't have these anymore. This should be gone. We should be bringing in new stuff. Listen, if you there's some laying on the table back there, Donald will be so happy to fill that table back up if you guys come and grab them all. And you go see Donald and say you need more, he'll give them to you. These are beautiful, wonderful ways to witness and to get the truth to people. Listen, you, brothers and sisters, are watchmen on the wall. Do you hear me? You will be held.
yourself responsible. You are responsible. You are an ambassador of another kingdom. It is not of this world. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you share the light that you have. Don't put it under a bushel basket. Listen. When the night is the darkest, the stars shine the brightest. This thing is wrapping up. It's about finished. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. How about you? Amen. Amen. Our closing song is 608. Faith is the victory.